I bought this boat, the Annabelle, from one of the famous fishermen here in Bodega Bay and completely rebuilt it, put a new engine in it, refastened it, put new frames in it, new shaft, new propeller. I got about a, you know, quite a bit of money invested in this little boat here and she makes a real good crab boat. Last year's crab season opening was delayed four and a half months throughout this coastal commercial district. This year, the season was again delayed. Crab tests showed elevated levels of domoic acid. Because of the domoic acid, they tend to just open sections and we really don't agree with that, that concept. The waters south of Point Reyes were open for crab fishing before the waters off Bodega Bay. Tony believes sectional opening of the district makes it difficult for smaller boats to compete with bigger boats. They go up and down the coast as they open up. They pack a lot of amount of gear, anywhere from 350 to 500 traps on their big boats, and they make a, a season on every opener. Guys like myself that can't travel that far, we're dependent upon fishing in our front yard, and now we got tremendous, tremendous pressure on the area. Crabs is very cyclical. About every seven years, you have a real good year. We pray for safety upon the sea. We pray that if it's your will, we'll have some crabs, especially safety for all of those. Around. There is concern that climate change will exacerbate the daunting challenges faced by local small boat fishermen. I'm just hoping that climate change doesn't have an adverse effect, but who knows yet? It's too too early to tell in this industry. But climate change had something to do with the salmon, I believe. I'm not a scientist. I just could tell you from my experience on the ocean how things have changed. Yeah, I used to fish salmon, and we did really well in it. And now we're dependent upon the crab business to sustain ourselves, and that's going downhill because of the immense pressure. Major storms have repeatedly kept the Annabelle in port this season. Another storm is due later in the week. Scientists continue to investigate the causes of the large and persistent algal blooms that have produced increased domoic acid levels. I think everybody who lives along the Sonoma coast knows is that we've struggled to get crab in the last year or two. The problem has been not that the crab are not out there in the ocean, but they're contaminated, if you like, by a, by a natural toxin. It comes from this plankton called Pseudonitsia, produces domoic acid. That is something which is not very good for us to eat. When humans eat domoic acid contaminated crab, they are susceptible to diarrhea and vomiting. At higher levels, domoic acid ingestion can lead to short-term memory loss, brain damage, and in severe cases, death. Well, why did we have this over the last couple of years? It is all part of the syndrome that we've had in California, the drought. And associated with that is the North Pacific Ocean has become very warm. We've been calling it the warm blob, or if you like, it's a marine heat wave. Warmer waters encourage widespread Pseudonitsia blooms. Normally we get Pseudonitsia and it'll happen for a few days. Maybe it'll be a problem in Monterey Bay. We've had a domoic acid poisoning of sea lions before in Santa Barbara. But what happened in these last few years is it went pretty much coastwide because of the absence of the strong upwelling, which is kind of beats up that phytoplankton and doesn't allow it to form these big blooms. Upwelling is a process in which deep cold water rich in nutrients rises to replace warmer surface water pushed away by the winds. A number of people are saying, well, this warm water event in 2014 and 2015 is very similar to what we'd expect with global warming and a further warming of the surface of the Pacific Ocean. 
there will be elements that are similar, but at the same time, what we see along the west coast here is really dominated by the winds. Uh, if the winds were to weaken off, yes, then it would look like the warm event we just had. But with climate change, what a lot of us are expecting is that the surface of the offshore ocean carries on warming, but near to the coast, the winds carry on blowing, maybe even get stronger. And that brings up the cold water that keeps the, the water cold near to the shore and maybe even makes near shore colder than it was. That's what we've seen in the last 40 years. Colder ocean rather than a warmer ocean next to the shore, but warmer offshore. And maybe warmer in the bays as well, in Tamales Bay and San Francisco Bay. For something like this harmful algal bloom, the pseudonitsia and the domoic acid that we had that, that impacted the crab, there's so many factors playing into this. You know, one of them is the physical nature of the ocean, how warm it is and how strong the winds are. But there's a lot of biology going on with these blooms as well. So it's really quite difficult to be sure about what the future holds. The hope is that they will go away and there's good reason to think that they might. But there's also some reason to think that they might continue. The people studying the ocean as scientists and the people catching fish out of the ocean to make a living and to feed people and so on have this common purpose of really sustainable fisheries. It has to be sustainable in a variety of ways. One is you need to have crab or whatever fish you want to catch every year, otherwise you're not going to have a fishery. But two, you have to have people who are sustained in this operation. They have to be able to survive off catching these fish and they have to be able to maintain the boats and so on. There's a socio-cultural element to it as well. Fishing communities have been around for a long time and they have a lot of wisdom and accumulated knowledge really about the ocean and how to go about it in the most benign way and the safest way. Captain Tony Anello comes from a long line of fishermen. The Anello family is part of the San Francisco Bay Area's rich fishing history. My grandfather came over in 1913 to Monterey, and he was a net builder and a, a fisherman in Sicily. Tony began fishing with his younger brother in 1969, and he hasn't missed a crab season since. The domoic acid scare and pressures on the fishing industry are causing concern about the future of the business. It really hurt a lot of us. My brother lost his house over the deal. I had a hardship. I, I exhausted all my savings. Everywhere we turn, there is a fence that we have to hurdle or a fire, so to speak, that we have to put out. We can't go fishing, but they allow the sport industry to go. They allow the charter boats to go and on an advisory. I don't know if anybody advised anybody. They have a right to make a living just like the rest of us, but they should not have been allowed to go until the total area was clean, just like us. I just want things to become equal and everybody have an equal playing field for all of us. And if the crab season comes back, God bless it. If the salmon come back in a few years, so be it. But we have to take every precaution at this time not to get shut out of anything. And a lot of us are getting shut out. 